At the end of Week 6's Falcons-Seahawks game, Matt Ryan heaved a 4th and 10 prayer to Julio Jones in double coverage, and Richard Sherman got away with pass interference. It created an uproar among fans and media, and the hot take industrial complex spun into overdrive with the clowns at SB Nation saying that the NFL must make late game pass interference reviewable. Those clowns have no credibility. Now, it's easy to see the play in slow motion and say, oh, pass interference, Falcons were robbed. But that doesn't do justice to the context of the game. For 60 minutes, the referees set a tone of letting the players play. Early in the fourth quarter, Atlanta linebacker Deion Jones held Jermaine Curse's arm in the end zone on a third and 10 play, no flag. On the same play that Sherman interfered with Julio Jones, Jones got a free release from the line by committing an uncalled illegal hands to the face foul. Over the course of 60 minutes, the refs called only two 15-yard penalties, zero defensive holding calls, and just one pass interference call that happened directly in front of a ref. Now, given that context, it's at least understandable that the referees would be hesitant to reward a critical PI penalty on a fourth down jump ball, especially when you look at the positioning of the referees. As SB Nation's Sid Ziegler noted, there are three referees responsible for calling pass interference on a play like this. Now, only one of the refs on this play might have a clear look. It's hard to tell with that NFL logo there. The other two refs are clearly screened by players' bodies, which is one of the downsides of heaving the ball downfield to a receiver double covered by a pair of all-pro defensive backs instead of, say, running for a first down on third and 10 when you have acres of space in front of you. Yes, referees make convenient scapegoats when things don't go the way you want them to, but there's plenty of fault in the players if we're being honest with ourselves. But okay, okay, the refs messed up and maybe affected the outcome of the game. Just maybe, because the penalty would have put the ball approximately at the Seahawks 40 yard line, meaning the Falcons would still need to pick up more yards to set up a field goal attempt in wet and windy conditions that had already contributed to a 29 yard missed field goal for the Seahawks, but no, no, this is egregious. It must be fixed. Let's make pass interference reviewable. Except, uh, the officials didn't throw a flag, so there's no pass interference to review. Well, coaches should be able to challenge the non-call. Okay, but the game was inside the two-minute warning, so it would have to be a booth review. So what then? Should the booth have to review every play inside of two minutes where there may or may not be pass interference? Now, if you say yes to that, if you are a pass interference absolutist who never wants to see a receiver touched, may I just remind you what happened the very next night when officials threw 23 flags for 19 penalties in the Jets-Cardinals game. The way this game has been officiated is not something anybody wants to watch. That's Sean McDonough delivering some straight talk about a game rife with yellow flags. Welcome to Monday Night Football. I'm paid to be here, but you don't have to do this to yourself. Believe me, I understand the pain of losing a game you feel your team should have won. Oh, why would you do that to me? I still need a trigger warning for that. But it is flabbergasting to me that fans want the game stopped more so more plays can be reviewed and penalized. I also want to see an actual game, not 4,000 replays while the announcers muse about what the call should be. The less I see Mike Pereira's face, the better. The problem with pass interference isn't the inability to review it. The problem is that the spot foul is an unfairly advantageous penalty that is too easy for offenses to exploit and too much pressure for refs to call. Please explain to me, rationally, how the most severe and dangerous penalties in the game, illegal hits to the head, pulling a player's face mask, chop blocks, twerking, are worth 15 yards, but pass interference can be worth 66 yards or more. Now, defensive interference penalizes the defense by granting the offense the yards the receiver would have gotten had he actually made the catch. By that same logic, offensive pass interference should be a turnover because it inhibits the defender from making interception. Now, there is an easy solution to this. Make DPI a 15-yard penalty. College football seems to be doing okay with it, and they don't even pay their players. If that solution is too simple for you, or if you think that the 15-yard penalties would give defenders an incentive to maul the receiver anytime they're beaten, then make DPI a 15-yard penalty for illegal contact that happens while a defender plays the ball, and make it a spot foul for egregious penalties on deep passes, similar to clear path fouls in the NBA or soccer's automatic red card for any player who commits a foul to deny an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Or if that's too much legislation, add an eighth referee to the field of play who can be in position to call that pass interference. You know, just like Richard Sherman has advocated for. Just know that whatever happens, you can't legislate human judgment out of sports officiating. And even if you could, sports would still find a way to infuriate and disappoint you. 
That's what watching sports does. It's why we like it so much. Because we're stupid.